Welcome to the tutorial on the workflow in PMetrics. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a PMetrics run. You'll notice on my desktop I have a, a folder called Example. Generally when I'm starting a project at the high level, I make a folder that has the same name as the drug usually that I'm working on. In that folder I've made three subfolders one called R script, one called runs, and one called source. Source contains the original data file that I have either made or been given to analyze. Runs contains all of the output directories from each run in PMetrics. Every time I want to do a new run, I put the files that I need in that runs directory and execute PMetrics and R script contains the script that I am generating to work on the project. Now you can see that I already have an output directory from a previous run here. I'm going to go to that directory and you'll see that there are four further subdirectories, etc., inputs, outputs, and working copy. Pmetrics makes these folders for you at the end of a successful run. The inputs folder contains, among other things, the instruction file, the model file, and the data file that you used to do that run. I'm going to take those back out to my runs directory, and I'm going to delete this previous run. Now in my runs directory I have the files that are required for a run. At minimum, Pmetrics requires two files the model file, which contains all the structural Fortran equations that define the PKPD model, and a CSV file that contains all of the subject covariate dosing observation information. The instruction file is optional, and you'll only have that if you've already completed one run in PMetrics. Now that we have set up our working directory and put the files into the working directory that we need to run Pmetrics, I'm going to launch our studio. And I have a blank console. So the first thing that I need to do is to make a new R script. And generally before I go any further, I save it in my R script folder. And I already have one there called example R. We're going to just overwrite that. Now, to run Pmetrics, the first thing that you have to do is tell R to load the library. Now, I'm doing this in a script window. If you want to know more about the difference between the script and the console window in R, please see our tutorial on that. The next thing that I usually do is make a comment that describes the run and numbers it. So this particular run had a T lag, a KA, KEL, and a volume. In order for Pmetrics and R to do their job, they need to know where the files are that you put in those folders. So you need to set the working directory, which is SETWD, and tell it where to put it. Now, you have to open this in quotations. In Windows, you would do something like C colon, and then you would put the directory structure. Now, pay attention to this because in Windows, directories are usually separated by a backslash. But R, as does Unix, uses a forward slash for directory dividers. If you really want to use the backslash, you can use a backslash, which is an escape character in R, with a second backslash. So for example, you might have this structure. In Unix, I can simply use this construction. Now, remember that R is case sensitive, so pay attention to upper and lower cases. And then finally, to execute NPEG in this case, you type NP run, 
instruction equals, and we're going to give it the name of the instruction file that I specified. Now let's go down to the console for a moment and take a look at the help for npRun. You can see here that in order to make npeg run, you use the command npRun, give it the model name. If the model is called model.4, which in this case it is, you don't need to specify that. An instruction file is optional, and in this case we're going to give it. And then these further parameters are described below, and we can go over those in details in another tutorial. So my command here for npRun is assuming that the model is called model.4 and giving it this instruction file. So let's execute these commands now by clicking run. You can execute a comment, it doesn't do anything. We're going to set the working directory to where I put those files and now we're going to do this run. And you'll see a Unix window pop up and the run will be initiated. Now, the behavior on Windows is a little different, so while this is running, I'm going to slip over and show you what it looks like in Windows. Okay, now we're going to see the differences in behavior on Windows versus the Macintosh. Over here, I have my R console window, and next to it open is a window that shows my working directory, and in that working directory, I have three files. The first is my data file, and the instruction file, and the model file. If I go back to my R console and I execute the command npRun and give it the instruction file name, you'll see that it tells you that npeg run was initiated with a time and date stamped, stamp and then you're supposed to launch this npscript.bat file that is now in your working directory to execute the npeg run. And additionally, the output directory is pasted into your clipboard. If we go back here to our working directory, we can see that we now have this new file npscript.bat as well as a couple of additional files. If you launch this batch file, the npeg run will initiate in a separate DOS window. Unfortunately, I had to do this because on Windows, if the batch file was executed directly from R, this DOS window opened as a blank window with no updating text such as you see here. And there was no way to know whether NPEG was running, how far into the run it was. So by executing the batch file manually, you get the visual update. Okay, we're back. The run is completed. It's parsing through the results. And at the end of a successful run, you get an automatic opening of an HTML summary page that you can scroll through and look at the results. We can close this window now. And back in PMetrics, if you want to get the data back into R in PMetrics, you need to tell it where the output went. So again, you set the working directory and you just use Command V or Control V to paste in the working directory, which will be in your clipboard at the end of a successful run. And then finally, to load the data back in for an NPEG run, you put NP load, and you can put a one in here We'll execute that command and the NP load, and you can see that we have loaded in the, all of these objects. NP data one, cove one, cycle one, final one, OP one, post one. They all have ones at the end of it, them because of the one that we specified here with the NP load command. If we go now to our folder, we can see that we have a new output directory that is time and date stamped with the four subfolders that contain all of the data files, either that were inputs or outputs. If we want to do another run, we would simply grab the input files or other files, drop them into the runs directory, go back to PMetrics, and begin with the same process again. That's it for now.